Hello guys. So I am Saral this side. So I am starting out with another one series of fork joint task because uh, you know I have designed one more program on uh, on uh, recursive task uh, which may be extending recursive task class. So let it go into the recursive task class first of all with the help of the D compiler. So I have extended this class. So as I told you, this has got its own method which is a very generic type, but yeah, it has its own uh, you know return type. So you have to return out something. and uh, you can see that it again extend a fork joint task okay so it has got its own set of methods so let's see its set of methods fork joint task so yeah these are the again the example methods so this is something same which i have explained you into my the previous video that you might have gone through so <laughs> so let begins again it extend for in chat ask it against future so this is something which is a decompiler is very really helpful for you to look out into what is the method signature into it so that you get an idea so basic thing is that it's a recursive task it may be returning it out a uh, an result okay and of the compute value which is may again of a generic type as you can see and uh, i have already shown you the uh, where i have shown you i have shown you in the my section that uh, you know the recursive task when i was explaining you a bit about the recursive task so i have told you that it returns a result whose type is specified by type parameter v so again it is of a very generic one that's what i mean to say and that's what i have shown you in the decompiler about it so let's get into an eclipse to understand more about it what i have done is that it's similar um, i don't want to take more waste of your time so what i have done is that i have designed my that program itself earlier the way that i had designed i have kept an integer variable it is the constructor but the trick that i am playing it is in the computer method now because now the compute method is returning a result that's what i have seen about the compute method if you hover your mouse it will show you that it is returning uh, a result okay so the computation may be performed by this task okay so here what i am saying that if any task which which threshold value it is greater than 100 then only we will execute the parallel task and if it is not greater than 100 then then we say that we don't need the task to be divided into sub task and then to be assigned a parallelism funda to it okay so let's believe that if suppose a threshold value it is greater than 100 then what we are doing is that we are simply again dividing this class into the sub two instances we are dividing the work into two and then we are creating the sub task here okay and one sub task are process independently they may be returning a result because we have implement implemented the future interface and then we are combining the result of the very first task and very second task into this solution variable they may be returning integer value as i told you and then we are returning that solution and the same funda i have applied in my main class also where i have initiated the pool this is the same thing that i have done as the earlier but the constructor that i have used is of overloaded where i am deciding it out how many number of core processors that is available with be the same funda that i have explained you here in this diagram ki that if the tasks are coming then each sub task assigning to the different core processors and then they will be working it the funda of this is about to have lex context switchings okay and then i have instantiated my this class and then i have started calling invoke method by passing this so let's see the outcome of this uh, without wasting much of time so here i am initiating with 120 so as i told you it is greater than 100 so i am expecting some parallelism to be happen so let's execute it it out about and you can see that it is first divided the 120 and uh, since 120 it was there so what has done is that key 120 comes here is greater than 100 so it may be entered into the this piece of code of block and what is it done that it has partition 120 into 2 60 60 and then it process them and uh, 60 and 60 okay uh, means the 120 was coming up then it is further divided into the 60 60 to so then 120 plus 60 plus 60 is equal to 240 and that's what you are seeing in the result at the very end that 240 and then again this when this uh, 120 was plated into the 60 60 okay uh, so 120 result was stored aside here and then this piece began another times for very 60 60 so 60 was less than 100 so it always says ki yaar no need to have you know parallel execution which is as per the correct logic okay so that's what you are seeing and here what we have done is that ki the interesting thing that you have to watch is here the result of after forking these two and then we are getting the uh, you know the written type and then we are joining it again and then we are getting the combined result so that's what i wanted to show you that it is giving you the 240 as a result so now you may be a bit clear about a recursive task it is similar to the recursive action but it is returning a value that's what i wanted to communicate and that's what i wanted to show you ki here it is 
recursive task is there okay we have uh, extended the recursive task class and then we are uh, you know uh, forking them and then we are again expecting them to return a result and then we are showing you the combined result of the answer is because is the 240s here so guys fork and join is something a very interesting thing is of dividing the big problem into small task and then getting it out result so it's something like task into subtasking into subtasking and then aggregating the result and then joining them as a final result so this is what is happening it out in a fork join framework so guys this is all about fork join framework do watch my videos in a sequence order to grasp it more and yeah please keep posting me your uh, things on linkedin i am expl exclusively posting it out a lot of articles on linkedin to help you out much better and i will be coming up on a lot of concurrency articles for you guys to come up and later on in some of fog join merge algorithm for you guys especially so thank you and uh, have a great weekend thanks thanks